Well, let's get to the markets, uh, three of the charts. Best ideas right now in the small cap space here on the local boss. We bring in uh, Jason McIntosh from Motion Trader. Jason, great to go see you and, and, and good morning. What is on the radar for you at the moment? What are the small caps that are moving? Morning, David and Ed. Yeah, look, I've got, uh, got three interesting ones to, to talk about today. It's, um, so look, this, this first stock I've got, I've got one to talk about is a company called Quantum Intellectual Property. So many of the stocks which I, I find through my momentum scans, they tend to have some sort of exciting new technology or, um, or, or, or maybe some you know, mineral deposit or an interesting backstory. This first stock doesn't really tick any of those boxes, but, you know, but here's the thing, you don't need to be an exciting opportunity to, you don't need to be an exciting company to offer an exciting opportunity. And uh, so what this company does is they've got a, got a range of intellectual property businesses and they're based across Australia, New Zealand, um, they're in Singapore and Malaysia. And so it's basically all things to do with, with um, trademarking, corporate law and you know, things generally in the IP space. And uh, look, COVID's been, it's one of those companies which has really come through the COVID period pretty much unscathed. And I think that's probably largely due to the defensive nature of, of what they do. And it's, um, and like you can, you can see there's been, been doing quite well through its last, its, um, it, its last yearly results. So its service revenue was up around 2.3% to about $90 million. On the surface, that doesn't sound overly exciting. But when the uh, currency's been a bit of an issue, the strong Aussie dollar. So when you look at it on a like-to-like -like currency basis, their, their service revenue was up something like 7.5%. And similar sort of stories playing out in their EBITDA. When you look at it on a like-to-like -like currency basis, comes in at around 13, 13.5%. So they're seeing some, you know, some, some good underlying growth in the underlying business. And another interesting thing is their um, patent applications locally were up 11%. So that's good because the local um, patent applications is up less than that. So they're actually growing their market share. Asia is another big area for them. So that's now represents 14% of the business. And this is an area where they've got poten real potential to, to grow what they're, what they're doing. So they're, they're actually, actually looking at mergers and acquisitions in, in that space and uh, recently bought a, a fast-growing legal tech business in New Zealand. So that's the way, one of the ways they're really growing the, growing the business. And uh, they've got a little bit of debt. They've got $16 million of debt, down, 17, down from $17 million on the previous year. But overall, their gearing's around 18%, so, so pretty modest. So look, um, I'll look, and another really interesting way to look at this is you've got the larger listed IPH, and that's got a market cap of about 1.9 billion compared to 170 million for, for Quantum. IPH is trading on a P of around 30, Quantum's at around 15. So I think there's a, there's a value case. So look, it ticks a value box, there's a, there's a growth perspective. The yield on the stock is around 6%, so it's got a good, good yield base to go off. And for me, it's got some positive momentum in the share price. So mightn't be exciting, but it's got some um, got some other good things going for it. I think a company which could do quite well over the next um, maybe the next next couple of years. Let's talk XREF. Now we were talking on the program in the previous hour about how the uh, the labour market here in Australia and elsewhere in the world is, in the world is really starting to go and ramp up. Is it set to benefit? Yeah. Look, XREF's a really really interesting company. It's um, look, it's probably not a name which is familiar to a lot, a lot of investors. It's only got a market cap of $120 million, not in the all ordinary, so that's naturally going to take it off the radar for a lot of people because, look, how do you, how do you find these companies which are outside the top 500? But, you know, for me, it's turned up in the momentum scans. And what, what they do, they, um, they uh, provide a, a cloud-based solution to a, a time-consuming HR task, and that task is reference checking. So... You know, the standard way you do a reference check is you've got to you know, pick up the phone, make contact with somebody, maybe play phone tag for a bit. It's a pretty laborious and time consuming sort of task. What XREF have done, they've, they've automated the whole process and they've made it a lot, lot, lot faster, um, a lot simpler. And also the data that they get from their, their, their tech platform is, op, is also a lot more um, reliable. So you know, it makes it hard for people to, you know, to fudge the truth and what they've actually been, been up to. And look, again, one of these companies which have done really well through COVID, because you had the, a lot of HR teams moving, moving to home, working remotely. So technology and software, which makes that remote operation easier, has been, been in demand. And you can see this coming through in their, in their, their growth. So revenue rose something like 56% to around $12 million last financial year. Um, that positive momentum is coming through in the current year. The last quarter, the September quarter, they had revenue growth of around 
126% to around $5 million. So that's on, that's on the corresponding period last year. And, uh, and they're getting some good clients, some big clients on board. They've got the Arnott's Group, Fortescue, Future Industries, Auscare. In the UK, they've got H&M Group. In the US, they've got the University of Pittsburgh. So it's not just an Australian oriented business. They've got potential to grow this you know, globally, really. So this really opens up a lot of potential. It's why it's such an interesting stock to, to have a look at. They're cash flow positive. Um, they have moved to EBITDA positive for the first time after like years of investing in this platform and, and building it up. Uh, came up in my scans a couple of months ago. It's had a bit of a run since then. Might consolidate a little bit. But look, I think it's one of those really interesting small caps with, with, a, with a great growth story, lots of potential. And the other big thing I like is that the, the, the founders and management are still very much on, on board, significant stakes. And look, you've got to like that in these smaller companies. You want to see management not just talking the talk, but you want to see them you know, walking the walk with their own, their own capital. And that's very much the case with, uh, with X-Rev. And your third pick sounds a bit uh, ex-Facebook, shall we say. And Serata is where you keep your virtual documents, sensitive information, a little Aussie tech sector. How's that looking? Yeah, look, another one of these interesting companies I've found through Momentum outside the all ordinary. So like until it turned up in Momentum scans, I'd, I'd never heard of this one myself. And like that's often the case with these, these emerging businesses. You don't hear about them until, you know, they hit the headlines. By then, share price is often a lot higher. And uh, so look, market cap of $185 million. It's, um, look, as you were saying, Annette, it's, um, they're, they're using a, a, a service as a software, software platform to create a, a virtual data room. And what they do with this, you, companies use it for, for deal transactions, board management, compliance, uh, tenders, all the things that you want to keep, all the company information you want to keep secure and you want to share with the right people at the right time. And yet you know, the company's got some really good growth. So customer numbers are up 23% over the last year to around, around 3,500. And this is also showing through in their revenue growth. So they're also getting record revenue growth. It was up something like 44% over, um, over the previous quarter to around $10 million. Again, some interesting clients coming on board. The company says they've got, they, they say they've got 10 of the, the top 10 legal firms in Australia, 10 of the top 10 investment banks, four of the top four accounting firms. And they also say they've got 87 of the top 100 ASX companies. So they, there's definitely some interesting um, interest in the, in the product that they're, they're putting out. They've also recently taken over a, a small company in the, um, the, the government's compliance and risk sector. Company called, um, company called names names escape escape me, but it's, yeah, it's an interesting little company which um, gives and what what the company says is going to do that it's going to you know um, really add value to the product suite they already have and open up open up the you know, potential of this product to more and more businesses and it also gives them a foothold in that government's compliance and risk sector which they say is worth something like fifty two billion dollars annually. So when you've got a small company stepping into getting a foothold into a big market, that's where you can potentially get some really good growth over, over, you know, over a year, two or more. Uh, look, came up in the momentum scans a couple of months ago, a bit like, bit like, bit like XREF, has had a bit of a run, might consolidate a little bit. But I think, again, it's one of those really interesting little small caps, which has a lot of potential to, to do some good things. And similar story with, with management and the founders still being on board. So, you know, you want to see those situations where the, you know, the management has a skin in the game, they're backing their own story. That's very much the case with Ansarada. So look, a company we could see some do some good stuff over the next couple of years. Jason, on that little company, the acquisition that they made, Trilight, uh, Triline GRC is the name of that little acquisition. But uh, thanks for those tips. That's Always great to go and have a look what's going on in the small cap space and uh, we'll speak soon. David and Ned, pleasure being on. Thank you.